very small 12 column, that is going to be what the actual mobile devices see. Uh, and likewise, if I'm using older browsers like IE6, which Foundation 6 does not support, uh, it would also see that mobile uh, or that small device breakpoint first. So think about your page from a mobile first perspective. So kind of following that same concept, uh, it's a different one, but it, it, it kind of is parallel. Uh, progressive enhancement. So progressive enhancement is pretty important understanding how you should write your website or your application as far as the front end code applies. You want to start with the minimum amount of browser functionality. And this is mirrored in how Zurb does their studios work. So when we do our studios work, uh, we scaffold everything in HTML first before we even touch a lick of CSS or SAS or God forbid, JavaScript. Uh, the reason we do that is we want to make sure that we can build a skeleton or a framework or a you know wireframe in code uh, that looks right, feels right, has all the right spacing, hierarchy of elements, etc before I start adding styles and interaction via CSS and JavaScript. So you need to assume that some users won't have access to advanced device features like Flash, et cetera. Start with a simple design, then build on it from there with more advanced features. So this is similar to mobile first in that you start with the least advanced use case in mind, the smallest uh, screen dimensions, the least amount of features. Uh, so typically how this works is in Zurb Studios, we'll scaffold uh, all of our code in HTML, then we'll layer in our CSS or SAS styles on top of that. And then if there's anything that requires any sort of more advanced interaction, then we'll layer in the JavaScript on top of that. But the idea is all those other things should work without the CSS and certainly without the JavaScript. Now, you're very rarely going to be in a case where CSS is not important. In fact, you never will be in a case if you're building for the web where CSS is not supported. It might have spotty support across different browsers, but uh, as far as progressive enhance enhancement is concerned, largely I consider that uh, around the realm of adding interaction via JavaScript or even back in the day, Flash uh, and things like that. So save that stuff for last because it should look good before you use it. Okay, now the big part, the thing we're all interested in, the reason we're here, the grid. Grids are amazing. They're kind of a big deal. I, I grew up in a world where I was coding in tables and frames and flame GIFs. Uh, in other words, if I wanted to make a layout that wasn't just 100% width and a wall of text, I had to use tables uh, or frames. And I don't even know if frames are even supported anymore. Tables, of course, are. But keep your tables for tabular data, folks. They have no place for layout these days unless you're using some advanced CSS or SAS to modify the display property uh, of your div. So how has the grid evolved? Well, in foundation two, we added responsive support. Uh, so that was allowing for you to uh, change the way the content on your page looks based on the size of the viewport. So if you were to grab the edge of your browser and make it scrunched up and tiny, well, you don't want all your divs or your, your designs going outside the frame of that window. And so we made them stack elegantly uh, at those different breakpoints. Now, back then when we were doing that, that was not mobile first, that was desktop first. So all of our media queries and our class names were in reverse of what they are today. For an old guy like me, that was kind of hard to unlearn, but it's definitely a good thing. Foundation 3 added SAS mix-ins for building semantic grids. Uh, if you're not using SAS, that might not be the, that exciting. In fact, back when 3 came out, I didn't use SAS, didn't know what it was, didn't use it. I missed out on a little bit of power there, but I was still perfectly comfortable and able to design awesome websites in Foundation using just plain CSS. Uh, Foundation 4, we added full 12 column grids on mobile and desktop. Uh, pretty big update there. Foundation five, we added the medium grid breakpoint, and that was kind of in response, I would assume, to the prevalence of tablet-sized devices. It gives us a lot more power at adjusting the way content looks. In our studio's work, when we're doing QA, we, we QA on basically every major device, supporting every major browser two versions back. If we didn't have that medium grid breakpoint, we'd be struggling to make sure that our code looked good across all those devices. And finally, foundation six, as it pertains to the grid, we added, we added the optional flexbox mode. 
Flexbox is amazing. I recommend y'all try to play with it. Uh, in addition to the awesome resources that we have here on Foundation, uh, using the docs to help you understand how to use the Flexbox grid, uh, I also recommend a nice little article by Chris Corder of CSS Tricks, where they uh, kind of break down the cheat sheet of how to use the Flexbox grid. Definitely take a look at that as well. Uh, it's some pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so the grid basics. The idea here is that any content should almost always go inside of a grid column. There may be a few exceptions where you don't want to put something inside of a grid column. Maybe if you got something that's fixed, maybe if you got something that's absolutely positioned, probably still in the grid column. Uh, but in most cases, 90% of cases, maybe even 99, you're, you're going to want your stuff inside of that grid column. The grid is built for mobile first code. So to understand the grid, you need to understand foundations breakpoints. So here's a basic grid example. Uh, we've kind of talked around some of this stuff already, but here's an actual concrete example in code. It's a very simple one, but it illustrates the point. Uh, basically, the first thing you want to do is create your div with a row, and inside that row should always be columns. Uh, you don't ever want to put a row directly inside a row or a column directly inside of a column. Uh, you always want it row, column, row, column. As you can see here in this example, you've got two columns inside the row that is perfectly okay. What you don't want to do is nest a column inside of a column or nest a row inside of a row, unless there is first a column there or a row first. And we'll, we'll go into more detail so that's not confusing in a moment. So rows and columns, these two elements make up the entire foundation grid and are required for any valid foundation layout. So as we just kind of touched on, columns always go inside of rows. You can also place rows inside of columns to nest the grid. And we'll cover nesting a little bit more in a moment. When you use the column class by itself, the column is always full width. So multiple columns will simply stack on top of each other. Now, we don't always use the column class by itself. In fact, we almost never do. Typically, if you use a, uh, just the columns, as we said in that last example, if we're actually looking at this uh, code we see in front of us visualized, you would actually see logo on one line and then one line below it, you would see the word menu uh, because we've just simply decided that these two columns live inside of the row, but these columns have no uh, specific width specified by not using any of the small, medium, or large breakpoints. So here's an example. This column one, as we just talked about, sits on top of this column, column two. Uh, again, this is because I've not added any breakpoints here. So if I wanted to add medium dash six over here and medium dash six here, uh, you'll notice that now each of these columns is spanning 50% of its viewport. And of course, if I change this, what happened? Well. When I got down to this breakpoint on the screen, I'm now actually in the small breakpoint zone. So if I don't specify a small breakpoint or column uh, width, then it's gonna automatically assume you meant 12 columns. So in other words, what you're seeing right here on screen is actually small dash 12. If I had actually decided to add a small class, maybe this one is small dash three, and this one is small dash uh, let's say nine, oops, sorry. You can see that it's behaving differently now. Cool, let's go back to the deck. Okay, so as we just saw in that code example right there, uh, Small six columns, small six columns, that should look 50%. So small six is an example of a sizing class. Uh, 12 divided by six equals 50% column width. And so likewise, if you put a small six, two small sixes next to each other, you will have two columns that are 50% of the screen uh, if you're at the small breakpoint. And actually, in fact, if I had only used, excuse me, if I had only used a small six in that previous example, in other words, had I not used a medium six or a medium anything, uh, small six will be inherited all the way up to the largest breakpoint, unless I specify another breakpoint uh, within that uh, same div for the largest uh, breakpoint screen. Uh, 
So foundation does by default use the 12 column grid. A 12 column grid makes uh, two up, three up, four up layouts really easily. Uh, that is basically based off design considerations 